to make sculpture? Why do people find the need to make things? Why do they make dwellings to live in? They make dwellings to live in and then they make sculptures to adorn their dwellings or in their gardens or their palaces. I mean, before that, they made them as points of worship. The earliest pieces of sculpture are the ancient gods that have uh, been sculpted out of stone throughout the centuries. And that is, we, we're just handed, been handed that to us. We continue to do it because we're human. It's, it's a part of us. We all need to procreate and some of us need to make sculpture. Well, it's a piece, I mean, the piece was made in celebration of a fantastic football player and a fantastic man. And that the people of Preston wanted to honour that and, and show him that while he was alive rather than um, when he's gone, you know. And uh, I think that's a, a fantastic thing. A fantastic blow. I first, do you know what, my dad took me to the end of our road when I was a little lad and he said, uh, I want you to see the greatest football that has ever been on this planet and he walked me to the edge of the road and he pointed and I looked and I saw this fella in a boiler suit carrying a toilet out the back of his van going to Miss Joy's house and uh, she was Miss Joy, what a character, she was a spinster with great eyeliner all over and rouge lipstick and she knew how to do herself and, and she loved Tom Finney she absolutely adored him and she used to pay over the odds for him to come out and fix a toilet my dad actually believed that she used to block it as well on purpose so that she could call him and there, there he was Tom Finney but I, I mean I wasn't to know at that age but that just shows you Tom Finney became a part of my life as everybody else in Preston because after he'd finished football he was he was doing his trade you know he was running his business as a plumber. I had a, pa a passion for Preston. Some, uh, it seems like a, uh, an abnormal passion for Preston. It grew because I was away from it and because I associated all the love in the world with it, the place and the people in it because and you do relate to the place that you come from. And, and it, I mean, I've got generations of people that come from Preston in my family going back quite some time, you know, and it's, uh, you know, I, I've, I've got a strong bond with that, I think, which has also played a lot of a part in my uh, understanding of things. Yeah, it's interesting thinking about Tom Finney and then what comes along the next job because many people were saying to me that you know you're going to get lots of work from this and I was got thinking great you know and their uh, first job to come through the door who should it be Blackpool FC the more I learnt about Stan Mortensen who is the, the statue is of the more I wanted to do it it was fantastic really, um, he was a roommate of Tom Finney's when they played for England, uh, they used to travel together on the train from Preston um, and you know it, it was a fantastic job in a way and I, I loved it. This was, was a statue of a green man with his arms tied behind his back and he had ivy growing up his body and um, I, I made that piece of work in about a week or something when I was completely, um, well, how can you put it, I was just living and working here for a couple of weeks I'd say and then one week I, I made this piece from start to finish um, but then didn't cast it 
um, it stood outside for a couple of years and um, well, I got on with the other project and um, I decided to revisit the piece, you know. So I, what clay was left on it, I broke off, recycled. That was, um, the clay was all just broken down and wet again and then reused. But I always have this um, erotic fantasy in the sculpture, which, is, which can become vulgar, you know. In its origins, it, it, it can be vulgar, but it's the intention for it not to be vulgar. Um, and there's a fine line between the two. But whatever, whatever somebody chooses to do in their life, you know, we're all, we're all creative human beings and we should be creative in everything we do. And I think ultimately that's what making sculpture in general is about, trying to bring some level of creativity physically into our environment so that you're dealing with something physical. Sculpture is physical. It has to be. It takes up space, you know. It's, but then it can be as light as a feather. So what a wonderful world there is to play with, you know.